Good morning. My name is Cesar Eliano. I'm the content director for VN Americas. We are about to start the webinar. Please wait for a minute uh, to allow all attendees to connect. Good morning, my name is Cesar Iliano and I am the content director for Bain Americas. Today, we will be presenting the main findings of our 2022 mining CapEx report, produced with the latest announcements made by 29 companies operating in Latin America. Laura Superno, our managing director for research, will be going through the key conclusions of the report and then she will be moderating a conversation with three members of our content team to talk about the prospects in different regions. She will be joined by Rogério Schellmeyer, our bureau chief in Brazil, Elinor Chevelcock, our mining correspondent for Chile and Argentina, and Sam Williams, mining correspondent for Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean. You can ask questions using the space at the box in the right hand of your screens. VN America's clients can read and download our mining CapEx report as it is already available in our platform. So I leave you now with Laura. Thank you uh, for the introduction, Cesar, and hello, everyone. Um, before I share the highlights of our 2022 mining CapEx research, I just want to briefly introduce the scope of the report and the aims. Um, we cover every year a sample of 29 major mining companies, and this includes the world's biggest mining companies that operate in Latin America as well as uh, the most important regionally based companies. So the figures represented, or sorry, presented in this report correspond to the company's uh, total global spending. And the idea of the data is to give a broad view of expenditure uh, trends in the mining industry. And um, the report also details near-term spending and the project plans of each operator, which we won't have time to fully discuss in this session, so I invite you all to review the, uh, the report afterward. Next slide, please. Uh, BN America's uh, 2022 CapEx report uh, shows that the key mining companies active in this region spent um, a combined total of $54.2 billion in 2021, and that represented an increase of 15% over their 2020 spending. Um, and the companies are targeting a further increase of at least 18% this year. And the reason I say at least 18% is because this 2022 spending uh, guidance here on the chart, which shows that the spending a target is six, over $64 billion, does not include uh, Codelco, which is one of the biggest operators because the company uh, declined to provide guidance information this year. So if we were to omit Codelco from the 2021 CapEx number and just compare the 28 remaining companies uh, for which we do have full information, the guidance for this year represents a 25% planned increase over 2021. So if this CapEx guidance is fully executed, it will represent the largest boost in spending, uh, at least since we launched our CapEx research five years ago. And you may recall that during the five years before that, uh, mining industry spending was generally on a downward trend. Um, so what we're really seeing this year is a strong continuation of this upward trend that began five years ago after metal prices bottomed out and just um, had a little bit of a blip there during the pandemic in 2020. That decline there was in pretty much entirely because of the pandemic. Um, in that sense, we think that the very high metal prices that we've been seeing since about mid-pandemic are one of the key short-term drivers supporting mining in, uh, companies in their spending plans because they certainly have plenty of cash flow from the last year or two. Uh, we also think that 
the continued kind of emergence from the restrictions of the pandemic support spending this year, as well as the rolling over of activity that could not take place under those pandemic restrictions. And while we also feel that the longer term market outlook for prices and especially um, prices for minerals that are critical to decarbonization, um, the longer term outlook is supportive probably of greater growth spending. We actually have not seen very many new investment decisions just yet. And um, as I will show in a minute, practically all of the spending increase uh, for this year that our figures show is attributable more to sustaining uh, spending rather than expansionary. The next slide, please. Um, 22 of the companies under our coverage are planning to increase their spending by at least 10% uh, this year. And there are only two that will decrease CapEx this year. And in each case, this is due to the completion of a big uh, construction project. Um, the biggest increase in percentage terms is CSN, Minerasao in Brazil, which is um, launching into a multi-year growth plan. Um, in terms of the biggest spenders, uh, seven of the companies that we cover are planning capital expenditure of greater than $3 billion this year. Um, and among those seven companies, the average increase uh, planned for this year is 31%. And that is driven by this 124% increase uh, you can see on the chart by Freeport McMoran. Um, Anglo-American, BHP, Glencore, uh, guidance for each of those shows um, an increase in the range of 22 to 24%, while Vale is also targeting spending growth um, of 11%, Rio Tinto 8%, and Tech uh, 6%. Um, there are a further 10 miners in our sample planning CapEx in the range of $1 billion to $3 billion. Um, as a group, those 10 miners will be looking to increase their spending by an average 29%, so a similar rate to the larger players. Um, the biggest percentages um, in this mid-range guidance group would be Southern Copper and Agnico Eagle, um, which respectively are looking to increase their investment by 73% and 61%. The next one, please. So this chart separates the industrial metal producers from those focused on precious metals. And we can see, if you look at the bottom of the chart, the 2020 numbers that the spending of the precious metal operators was somewhat less impacted by the onset of the pandemic than the spending of the industrial operators. And the precious operators spending recovery in 2021 was stronger. Um, this group of of precious metal miners is still looking to grow spending um, at a larger rate than the industrial minerals miners, but at a um, less this year than last year. Okay, sorry, 24% versus 32%. While the industrial miners are seeking a bigger increase um, than, than what they increased last year. Um, the 2022 guidance among the precious metal operators uh, is led by uh, Buenaventura, the Peruvian company, um, which is looking to more than double its spending this year as it starts up construction of its San Gabriel project, which received its regulatory approvals earlier this year. The second biggest overall increase um, is planned by Equinox Gold, followed by Agnico Eagle. Now on to the next one, please. In terms of expansionary versus sustaining capital, 23 of the operators in our analysis provided at least a partial breakdown um, of information, sustaining versus expansionary, but only 15 of the operators provided those details for both 2021 and their 2022 guidance. So this chart includes those 15 operators that provided that information. Um, it gives us a partial view, but what's interesting is to see, as I mentioned before, that nearly all of the combined CapEx increase planned for this year by these 15 companies is in the sustaining capital category. So sustaining capital rising 22%, um, 
while the growth capital item is almost flat. It's a 3% increase. Um, it's not um, even among the operators, though. Um, we see a 7% reduction in expansionary capex by the seven industrial miners that provided this data, which again are not uniformly uh, planning to decrease growth spending. For example, Nexa is planning a large decrease as it completes construction at its Ardipana project, but Southern Copper is planning a large increase in expansionary spending. Um, this group also includes eight precious metals operators um, looking to increase spending, uh, expansionary spending by a combined 41%, that's driven by Buenaventura and also Newmont, and the precious metals uh, miners sustaining CapEx is targeted to rise 11%. So that concludes the presentation of the CapEx report highlights. I'll now go to our regional team for the panel discussion, invite everyone to turn on their cameras. Hello, hello. Okay, microphones too, make sure we can hear everyone. Um, today, the idea here is to discuss the environment for mining investment in some of the key Latin American mining markets. And we'll also talk about the most important project activity that we expect to see taking place in the near term in these countries. So let's go first to be in America's Brazil Bureau Chief, Rogério Gelmeyer. Hello, Rogério. Hey Laura, good morning, thanks. Uh, hi to everyone. So here in Brazil, we have the, as our CAPEX report is showing about the CSN mineração, is a, is a big topic in Brazil because the CSN is developing the Casa de Pedra project in Minas Gerais state, which is the largest our project on, on the pipeline. And the, the good news for, for the CSN mineração is that the most of the financing uh, structure of this project is already arranged via the shares offer that the company uh, held the la last year. And the, there is a lot of expectation about the advance of this project. And of course, you have the, the mining Tita Valley which is the important, important projects, uh, especially in Pará State, uh, in the north of Brazil. And the Vale, along with the iron ore projects, Vale also has relevant projects in the, in the segment of Cooper and the nickel projects, which is part of not only by Vale, but also part of the strategy of the government of, and also of stakeholders in the sector to looking for more diversification of the mm -hmm. mine activity in Brazil. Uh, currently, the mine activity in Brazil is too concentrated in IRR, and the government wants to stimulate uh, a diversification of uh, this industry. And uh, also, uh, it's important to highlight uh, uh, other projects of, of Anglo-American here in Brazil, Anglo America is a is an important company in terms of operations in Brazil, and the, of course you are attempted to to projects of the of the, the junior companies because the junior companies will play a key role in the in the diversification of the industry in Brazil. Perfect. And um, speaking of the government trying to diversify. Um, there is a new mining roadmap underway in the country, a long-term plan for the sector, which could be ready uh, later this year. I believe diversification is one of the pillars of that. You know, what is the importance of this plan? Um, you know, what are the other pillars and, and how much could it shape you know, policy? Yeah, that's a good question, Laura. Actually, actually Brazil has already a, a kind of long-term plan for the energy sector in general. And this plan is, is working as a guidance for all kind of stakeholders. And they, they wanted to replicate that this kind of format in the mining segment. And this is a plan for the next 30 years to, to looking for the diversification, 
also to explore uh, how the government can help uh, companies to look for the financial or finance mechanism to go ahead with with this kind of diversification and the interest point is is that the expectation for the publication of this this uh, long term plan for of, uh, from the government is that it will be on the same time that you have the presidential election in Brazil in October but the stakeholders don't expect a real and direct influence of the election process in this plan because in Brazil this is pretty clear that the, the mining sector is a state policy, not just a policy of an, an administration. So the expectation is for the publication of this plan until December of this year. And the, you're looking for not the only for, for the potential segments, which will be more concentrated in copper, nickel, and the other areas as well, along with lithium, and the also to looking for the make financing mechanism that the government wanted to, to present for our stakeholders. Perfect. Um, so you mentioned that mining is more a long-term um, activity, of course, which has to do more with state policy than with the policy of any given administration. But going into this election period, um, there is a certain level of polarization. You know, what's your expectation regarding the near-term impact of the electoral period on activity, if any. Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, it's important to highlight that in Brazil, we don't see a, a risk of nationalization of the mining segment. But of course, the, the result of the election in Brazil has a, can has a direct impact in the mining segment. Because right now, we, we have two main candidates in Brazil the incumbent president, Jair Bolsonaro, and the former leftist president, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva. And the main differences between both candidates is about the social programs. Yeah. And the, under Lula, analysts are expecting more social programs. And the, that can, can affect directly the mining segment because with the more social programs, the government like it to look for higher taxes. And the, the mining segment is performing pretty well in, in recent years and this year as well. And the mining segment can be a target of more pressures in terms of higher taxes. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Uh, thank you very much, Rogério, for the insights of Brazil. Um, I'd like to turn now to Sam Williams, being America's mining, uh, Mexico mining correspondent. Hello, Sam. Um, Hi, Nora. Hi. Yeah, in Mexico, we've seen permitting getting more difficult for mining companies. And there's also this continued push by the government around lithium resources and, and greater state um, involvement. Um, you know, how do you see those issues playing out this year and and you know what would their impact be on near term you know mining investment activity yeah sure thanks uh, laura um so i think on the um permitting front um it's fair to say that a number of companies have uh, run into some problems recently um particularly with the um, environment ministry i think mexico has always been seen as a country where you can get the permits done um um you know quickly and um, straightforward is perhaps not the right word but they can be they can they will normally be um a permit will be issued at the end of it and under president amlo and um, things have got a little bit more complicated um so just recently um vulcan materials um which had a, a limestone quarry um suspended by simonat which is the environment um, ministry in mexico following an in inspection, which uh, apparently found some operations posed a potential risk to um, to wildlife. Um, Vulcan has said that the decision was illegal and is, is planning to, to contest it. Um, we've also had the case of Fortuna Silver, um, which has had a string of pro problems at its San Jose silver mine in Oaxaca state, um, where um, Seminar initially rejected an application to extend the existing mine permit by a further 12 years. 
um, which was a decision the company at the time said was unprecedented for an um, operating mine. Um, Terminat later went back and approved the extension, but has since come back again and said that um, it made a typographical error in the in its um, in its decision and has sought to reduce the term of that permit extension from 12 years to two years. Um, but the company is, is fighting that. Um, they said they've had some legal advice that typographical errors are not grounds to, to, to change their existing permits. Um, but there have also been a series of open pit gold projects which have been blocked at the environmental permitting stage. Um, I think these problems are going to persist uh, through this year and, and, and into next year, uh, we may see more problems emerge, um, particularly in areas where companies have challenging, particularly challenging relationships with local communities. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely something to, to look out for for this year. Um, on the lithium front, um, so, yeah, there's been a, a new law passed which basically restricts Lithium mining and exploration to the state. Um, the government's going to set up a new state company to, to do that. Um, but the bigger question here is really what it means for companies with existing lithium concessions. Um, President Andres Lopez Obrador has said that all these, all existing lithium concessions are now under review. Um, from a legal point of view, I mean, it's existing concessions shouldn't be impacted by the new law. But um, authorities are probably going to be looking for any excuse or any reason to lawfully cancel existing concessions. So if a company fails to fully meet its obligations, um, they need to make extra sure that they do meet, meet these obligations. Um, so we'll really have to wait and see what, this, what happens with Gan, Ganfeng Lithium Sonora project, which is the only large advanced lithium asset in Mexico. Um, the company has said it wants to engage with the government on how best to advance the, the project, which is a £420 million pound dollar asset, which was due to begin production in, in 2024. Um, so I think part of your, your question was how that impacts on investment activity. Um, so I think on the permitting front, um, you know, this may hold back a few, a few projects. We may see some mines impacted. But I think mostly they're going to be unaffected um, by this. Um, the lithium law um, will halt new um, new players coming into the industry in Mexico, um, and I imagine it will at least delay um, Ganfeng's spending at uh, the Sonora project. Um, but yeah, again, we're going to have to wait and see how that rolls out over the coming coming months. Um, just as a bit of background, I mean, the mining chamber, Camimex, does expect overall spending in the mining industry to fall this year to about $3 billion from about four and a quarter billion last year, um, which it, um, it blames um, inadequate government policies is what it says is the, the reason behind that. Um, but, I mean, several of the companies we cover are planning to spend more in Mexico this year. Yeah, I think um, for me at least, the what I'm trying to watch and understand in Mexico is whether these policies are actual are are just going to be delaying um, investment and development activity, or if we're actually going to see you know investment going elsewhere and actually an, an overall decline. I mean, do you see these as I don't want to say short term, but kind of you know AMLO problems that in the you know maybe five years down the line are are out of the way or is this a broader you know turning of, of, of events in mexico okay yeah, so it's a good question i think um in terms of permitting i, I don't think things are going to ease up um i think things are probably going to stay more difficult than they have been in the past um but then permitting is difficult in, in many parts of the world and um, so I, I imagine that will have a, only a kind of small impact on on investment. Um, I mean, there are concerns about the lithium um, law. Uh, one concern is that it could be um, just with a change of wording or with a new bill, it, it could be extended to other minerals. So they could decide 
you know, we like copper. We, copper is a strategic metal for us, the government. We want to um, restrict that to, to the state as well, um, which would obviously be a huge um, problem because copper is a much more valuable um, product. Um, so I think there's kind of a level of risk, but I think companies are still investing um, and, you know, every company will be deciding whether it wants to send money to Mexico or Peru or anywhere else around the region. Um, and, you know, I think everywhere is looking pretty complicated. Um, so I'm sure kind of investment will, will still continue. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Sam. Um, I'd like to move over to Eleanor Treblecock, who is our Chile mining correspondent. Hello, Eleanor. Hi, Eleanor. Laura. So in Chile, we have a situation like kind of what Rogerio was mentioning could possibly be a, a risk in Brazil. We're seeing this risk already um, very much alive in Chile. Um, the Congress continues to discuss a bill to raise royalties on copper and lithium. Um, we also have a constitutional assembly um, continuing to work. They've just actually put out an initial draft of a new constitution. Um, and they have kind of a dwindling, the, the time frame is running out for them to finish that um, and, and move it on to a popular vote. And there's growing doubt that that document will actually be approved by the public. Um, you know, I'd like if you could to just tell us, you know, what some of the key risks are for mining in those processes. Well, yes, um, both royalty bill and the proposals that arose from the Constitutional Assembly uh, have created a lot of uncertainty within the mining sector here in Chile. Uh, most of the mining uh, association and companies have released statements and reports to express rejection to the current regularity uh, proposals, such as the royalty bill. Um, because they consider that this kind of proposals uh, are a, a risk for the sustainability of the mining sector, also for investments. So in the case of the royalty bill, this is a tax that uh, is applied on mineral sales, uh, especially copper and lithium, instead of profits. Uh, so it has been considered a threat uh, to the long-term competitiveness uh, of mining along with leaving out the small scale mining companies. So um, we must remember, Laura, that the Chilean mining uh, already pays a lot of taxes because they paid corporate tax, mining patents, exploration concessions, municipal taxes, um, the specific tax of mining activity, uh, also regional contributions, so among others. So uh, this royalty bill has been observed with uh, great interest by, by Chilean mining companies, um, especially because this bill, which is uh, currently is under revision by the upper house uh, and is now part of uh, President Gabriel Boric's uh, tax reform. Um, uh, the tax reform is going to be presented in June of this year. So, um, and the idea of the government of President uh, uh, Gabriel Boric is to collect 0.5% uh, uh, of the GDP with these tax reforms. Um, so, all mine, mining companies are very, very attentive to the movements around this uh, right to, right to bill. Um, well, to understand a little more about the royalty bill, it's important to note that uh, it's considered two aspects. Uh, the ad valorem component, which will be applied on the annual gross sales, depending on the Cooper uh, annual price. And there is other uh, component that's profitability, uh, which will be calculated from the result of applying a marginal and progressive rate called the um, adjustment mining exploitation margin uh, with the objective to um, uh, and, and also consider the tax that already uh, companies made to the states, the income taxes. Uh, so this could be a very serious tax uh, because it's huge. And But given the number of social reforms and economic measures that uh, must be implemented in Chile, 
uh, it's very probable uh, that this kind of right B is going to be approved finally. Um, it's, it's important to, to make a, a little background, uh, uh, Laura, because Chilean economy uh, have slowly uh, have slowed significantly uh, since the uh, social outbreak of 2019, uh, but also because of the interruptions caused by, by the pandemic, and also now we are we are seeing how the impact of Russia war against Ukraine is also um, having effects in our economy. Uh, Chile consumer price uh, up by higher than expected, 1.4 percent in April, boosted boosting our uh, rising cost of food and fuels. Um, so the royalty bill, together with the high inflation, is causing a lot of concern, as I said. Um, in, yes. No, just um, how is that concern translating in terms of? Um, what companies are talking about in terms of investment decisions? You know, have any ongoing projects been impacted, or um, you know, are you seeing companies talking about you know delaying investment until there's more clarity on these issues? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, some uh, new projects projects are now paralyzed. What we have in portfolio is uh, expansion of projects. Uh, especially aimed to to have a more optimization of water because water is also a very crucial theme in Chile because we have 13 years of drought of severe drought uh, so we are trying to manage uh, the the project the mining projects are trying to manage optimization of water and also because we have a, a decline in the ore grade so so the current projects are more focused to water optimization and to try to uh, manage the the decline in the ore grade. Um, so so companies are waiting until we have more certainty in the legal aspect here in Chile. Um, well, uh, a lot of several studies and reports have um, analyzed the impact of royalty bill and. And in the long term, it will be uh, it will discourage investment. It will also put the collection and the production uh, into higher levels, higher prices. Um, so, so uh, uh, all the and we must remember that the, the investments and the and the private mining companies uh, have. The, the the reason that push our economy uh, in a good level uh, in the last 15 years mining production private mining productions uh, was more than 200 percent in the last 15 years so that is the importance of our private mining companies in chile um, uh, so well as i said uh, is a very um, a concern uh, film. And about the Constitutional Assembly, uh, let us re remember that arose from the social outbreak in 2019 and with several demonstrations of violence, confrontation with the national police, uh, where citizens were demanding social reforms. Uh, so that's what, uh, how the Constitutional Assembly was created. Um, and well, finally, we are in the last stage of this constitutional assembly. Uh, we are we have already a draft for a, as a proposal for a new constitutional chapter. Uh, and after twelve, uh, no, uh, ten months, uh, uh, the final text considered um, almost five hundred of articles. Uh, but the maybe the the positive thing is that the large mining companies was uh, not included in the constitutional chapter. Um, the most uh, articles that were approved uh, is more related to some uh, areas, geographic areas that uh, was excluded for mining activities, such as glaciers and other protected areas for hydrogenic uh, purpose. Um, and the articles also pro protect a lot the small scale mining, for example, but the large mining companies were left out. Um, 
but uh, well, uh, let, we're going to to keep watching because now the the constitutional charter is under revision by another committees uh, in order to give a final uh, test in in mid June and July four. Um, so anyway, we will have to wait what will be the final test after that. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Eleanor, for the insights on what's happening in Chile. Um, I'd like to come back now. Um, we've talked a lot about the, the risks. Let's um, finish off by uh, looking as, as positively as we can at what the specific opportunities might be um, in the very near term this year, uh, next year. Um, it's something we went over in the CapEx report um, and you know, I'd like to go over here now with, with all of you. Um, you know, what, you know, we're seeing development projects happening um, underway around the region even in, in these contexts that we're describing. Um, and I just wanted each of you to please, you know, share with us, you know, Rogerio gave us a few, um, a little preview earlier of the projects going on in Brazil, but go into a little more detail, the, 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 the very key projects in, in your countries where spending is taking place this year or any really important project milestones that we should watch for this year that could, you know, constitute opportunities in the region. Maybe, Rogerio, would you like to start us off? Sure, sure. So, uh, in, in terms of projects, one one of the main projects that that I did not insert specific, specifically in your CAPEX report, but is linked with a major project, is about the Sul Americana de Metais, the, the Chinese unit, which has a $2.1 billion uh, project, iron ore project, uh, to go ahead in Minas Gerais states. A few days ago, uh, I was uh, talking with the director of this company, and they are looking for the, they are waiting for the environmental license of this project for the coming months. And these these licenses will, will will open the opportunity for the companies to looking for financing for this project and to looking for the start of construction of this project. And uh, also, as I mentioned uh, before, Valley has a lot of a lot of projects in Para State, and also Valley is under pressure in Para State because the government uh, over there is pressuring the company to invest in more in, in Pará, which is Bay, which is the Carajás mining mining project. And the, the Pará government wanted to want Valley to invest more in the in the chain of the of the iron ore segment. Uh, the government in Pará wanted to put Valley investments in, in steel makers uh, inside the state. And the Another area that I, I see a lot of opportunities is in terms of decarbonization and the electric, electric side of the mining segment. As Eleanor uh, cited about the inflation pressure and the cost pressure in Chile, this is a situation also in Brazil. And the good news is that, that a lot of past projects in Brazil, which had a ESG appeal, now also has a financial terms appeal for companies. For example, we are seeing Vale and the CSN and also Anglo American invest in projects to use electric trucks and use more electric power in the machinery. So this is opening a lot of opportunities for this kind of stakeholders that they work in terms of batteries that in works uh, in terms of the trucks production. Uh, so that is a, of course, the inflation present a lot of a lot of challenges for companies, but they also present opportunities. Thank you, thank you, Rogerio. That's interesting. Um, should we hop back to, to to Eleanor? What what can you tell us about? Um, you know, project opportunities that you're seeing or activity in, in, in Chile? Well, I, I would like to add, Laura, that um, 
beside the political discussions, we are also dealing with uh, economy uh, slowdown. Um, the last International Monetary Fund uh, projections uh, considered that our economy would drop to 1.5 uh, this year and just 0 0.5 to uh, next year. Um, and our Chilean central bank, uh, bank sorry, uh, also report that our national economy will uh, only spend about 1% this year. So together with the political discussions and the economic figures, um, we also have to consider that uh, the disapproval to our president Gabriel Boric is uh, reached more than uh, 6%, 60% this May. So, of course, these are impacting our mining uh, projects. According to ASESCO, uh, the Center for Cooper Mining Studies, uh, about 49% of our mining companies believe that investment will fall in the next two years. Uh, so, so, it's not a very positive uh, scenario, but uh, we also have projects going on, as I mentioned, uh, mainly uh, the most important are related to the water, uh, to use desalination plants for water optimization, and also expansion of the current mining uh, operations in order to uh, improve the production, we, uh, who, uh, which has been also in a slowdown during the last month. Um, Anyway, Codelco, for example, President Maximo Pacheco, uh, he considers that miners is, is a very good expectation because, of course, uh, our Cooper price uh, achieved uh, record prices uh, in the last uh, month. Uh, so we have we have also some positive uh, uh, figures. Um, but for example, uh, in April, we heard about the rejection from our environment service uh, to the Los Bronces Integrados project uh, of Anglo American. Uh, and of course, all mining associations uh, did not like this kind of a rejection because there was a huge uh, project project that also involves a lot of employment, also in involves more production of co form the country. Uh, so there's a lot of criticisms about this uh, rejection to Los Bronces Integrado. Um, uh, for example, I can say that we have the, the example of uh, Freeport McMoran, who is the own uh, with Codelco or El uh, of Elabra Mining. Uh, for example, in the last first quarter report of the Freeport uh, company, uh, they said they also said they are going to keep the investment pending until until there is more clarity on Chile's regulatory and fiscal matters. Uh, so it's, that's more, uh, how is our scenario about investment in, in mining? Thank you, thank you very much, Eleanor. Um, Sam, same question. What you know? What are the the milestones or projects to watch or things that you're seeing in Mexico in those terms? Yeah, uh, thanks, Laura. Um, well, I think one of the biggest projects we've got, um, which is nearing completion now, is uh, Fresnillo and Mag Silver's Juanicipio project. It's a 440 million um, dollar investment, uh, silver and gold producer. Um, it's has been delayed um, due to delays um, connecting the project to the grid um, by the, the state um, utility in, in Mexico. Um, so that's due um, to come on stream probably around mid-year. They've got commissioning to start around mid-year, that is. Um, so, uh, I mean, the bulk of the spending is already, is already done there. Um, also this year we've got Alamos Gold's La Yaqui Grande, which is a, a new mine within the company's Malatos um, mine in, in Sonora State. Um, so that's a $137 million um, project, um, which is going to produce around 123,000 ounces per year of gold. Um, and yeah, again, this, most of the spending on that is is now done. I think it's due to, to begin production in the next next quarter in Q3, I think. Um, silver Crest Metals is also um, advancing its Las Chispas Silver Gold project, 
um, which is an investment of around 138 million, um, and that is now nearing nearing completion. Um, so just also over this year and next year, um, Southern Copper is one of the big spenders in in Mexico, and they've got a string of projects um, which will be coming into into production. The largest of them is their um, Bacanora Zinc um, project, which is a 413 million dollar project, which is going to produce um, zinc and copper and due for first production next year. Um, so a lot of the spending is going to take place on that this year. The company is also advancing its Pilares copper project, um, which is a $159 million project, and El Pilar, which is a separate copper project, $310 million, which is um, due to start production next year. Um, just looking, looking further ahead, I mean, Torex Gold have, um, they're going to be spending money on their Media Luna project. They came out with a feasibility study recently, which increased CapEx uh, from around $500 million previously to about $850, you say $148 million. Um, so spending is going to be um, ongoing there this year and next year. They've got production set to begin there. Um, in 2024, and this is going to prolong their life. It's on the same land package as the El Limon Guacas mine. Um, so that's going to, that's really kind of a project that cements their their future in Mexico over the next few years. Um, yeah, so I think these are the main um, project milestones um, which we'll be looking out for um, this year. It's interesting to hear a lot of those those projects in Mexico have been, well, like mining projects in general. They've been a very long time coming, I think, and, and seeing them yeah. actually getting to some of these stages in this context that you described earlier is kind of an, an interesting contrast. Um, yeah. So thank you, Sam. Um, to round off uh, the discussion, um, I, I want to add that there, are, you know, in the interest of, of, of you know, just really highlighting some of the opportunities that we're seeing around the region this year. Um, we've seen, at least, you know, among the operators that we've filed in the Mining CapEx report, there are a number of other projects um, that we're watching in other countries around the region, particularly Argentina and also Peru. Um, you know, in Argentina, one of those projects is the Rincon Lithium project, which was acquired this year by Rio Tinto, which is quite interesting because as everyone knows, I think you know Rio Tinto is one of the very top largest mining companies in the world, and it does not have that many assets in Latin America. So to see it acquiring a lithium project in Argentina is, um, you know, it seems like something to really watch. Um, the company is planning to spend $100 million uh, of the project in the next two years, and it requires an overall investment of um, a billion, I believe, over the next several years. So that's a good one to watch. Um, also in Argentine lithium, um, we're watching Alchem's Oloros uh, mine, which is undergoing an expansion. Um, and the company is also advancing pre-feasibility studies for a further phase three expansion. So that's another big one in Argentine lithium. Um, another milestone we expect to see in Argentina this year is regulatory approval at the Takataka -taka, uh, copper project operated by First Quantum and um, also some spending taking place at the, the Mara project, um, previously Agua Rica, um, which is operated by Yamana Gold. They're looking, you know, moving that project toward feasibility. Um, and just over to Peru where, you know, things have not been easy for President Castillo and there have been, you know, stoppages at big mines and continued conflicts, uh, social conflicts that the government has really struggled to, keep a handle on. Um, even there, you know, we're seeing some important milestones for this year. Number one is probably the delivery, the completion of uh, Anglo-Americans' Cayaveco copper project, um, where, you know, spending this year is still going to be, um, you know, in the range of 500 to 700 million. So there's a good deal of spending going on this year as they finish up construction there. Um, in addition, I think I mentioned earlier, Buenaventura is set to begin construction at San Gabriel. So this will be the first kind of groundbreaking on a new project that the country has seen in, in, in a while. Um, 
2022 spending at that project will be around $100 million. And another one we think is worth watching uh, in the country is um, Zafranal in the copper space, operated by Tech. Um, the project was admitted for environmental evaluation this year. Um, another one uh, worth mentioning in Peru is um, in Newmont's Yanacocha mine. Um, they're looking to make a decision this year um, on the Yanacocha sulfide expansion um, and spend a fair bit on development um, this year. Um, over $400 million. Um, and then, um, you know, lastly, I, I just want to mention uh, Colombia because that's always kind of a country to watch. Um, one of the key projects there, Gramalote, which they're, you know, Colombia is really watching to try to advance its role as a copper producer. Um, Anglo Gold Ashanti, the operator, is expected to complete the final feasibility studies there this year. So that will be. Um, an important one to watch and, and, and see what happens, not only in terms of the costs and the feasibility of the project, but then what happens in terms of um, permitting and, and you know, social acceptance. So with that, um, we will conclude the panel today. I wanted to thank you know, each one of you for participating, uh, sharing your insights from around the region. Um, and we'll hand it back over now to Cesar for the closing remarks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks. Laura, Elinor, Sam, and Rogerio for being part of this webinar. It was a very uh, interesting conversation. I again remind all Bean America's clients that you can read and download our Mining CapEx report in our platform. And for those of you who are yet not clients, I invite you to visit beanamericas.com and check out the great content that we publish every day. Have a nice day.